Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Open at Microsoft. I'm Neha Agarwal, an engineering manager in container networking. And with me, I have my team member, Vamsi Kalapala, an engineer manager. Today, we are going to talk about Retina, a cloud native observability platform. We recently open sourced it at a March KubeCon, uh, the Retina Cloud Distributed Network. So let's learn more about it, what Retina is. So Vamsi, tell me more about what is, what is Retina? Retina is this eBPF-based network observability platform for cloud native workloads. Uh, it is built to be lightweight, extensible, and it is built to uh, make it easy for non-networking engineers to know what is networking. We are trying to demystify networks here for like traditionally like platform engineers, uh, uh, DevOps engineers of cloud native workloads. That's, that sounds great. You mentioned something about eBPF. Can you elaborate more about what is eBPF? Yes, eBPF is, when we extend it, it's extended Berkeley packet filters. It is this uh, technology which is built on existing kernel stack to make kernel more extensible. So traditionally, when a new functionality to be added into kernel, it will take like a couple of years for it to get to the wild. But eBPF helps us to extend it very seamlessly with this very safe uh, sandboxed programs running inside kernel, which can uh, almost do anything which you could do in Linux kernel today. Oh, that sounds in, uh, exciting, and I believe that will not impact the performance of an application if you are injecting these programs inside the kernel and getting the observing data, observability data. Yeah, no, yeah. actually, because uh, it runs almost like native bytecode, so mm -hmm. it's very performant. Sounds good. So. Why right now? I mean, I've heard. I mean, I've, I know, know a lot of open source tools which are already they already have extensive observability uh, platform tools. So why why Retina in general? Absolutely. So Retina is built to be very generic. So a lot of these existing uh, net observability tools they are built very tightly coupled with the provisioning uh, um, uh, details of the cloud native workload. So like Cilium and Hubble, it can only run with Cilium. Yep. Uh, Calico and its uh, uh, solution, it can only run. But we are building a very uh, generic solution which can run on any OS, any CNI, any mm -hmm. uh, work, uh, Kubernetes workload. So it is way more extensible and lightweight so that you can add in uh, more features with ease. So we can be looking at it later on. Awesome. Um so this this sounds pretty exciting and um, keeping it lightweight and I can run it in any cloud you mentioned like yes. uh, I can I can spin it up um, in Azure AWS JKE like any with with any with any OS Linux and Windows you, you mentioned that yes um, awesome so uh, how about we deep dive into the Retina if you can tell me more about what features uh, Retina has um, what are the what what does it offer does it uh, so can you show me something more about it? Absolutely. So let's switch here. So this is our, our website, retina.sh. And then if we quickly go in here and then uh, look at our features. So we have uh, metrics capabilities, flow logging capabilities, and also distributed cap packet captures. But today we are going to just focus on metrics. Mm -hmm. And metrics uh, are built on top of like we get like these kernel events. We enrich them with this Kubernetes context or any of this cloud native context, and then convert that into industry standard Prometheus metrics, which can then be visualized in anywhere. Like most people will be using Grafana for that mm -hmm. matter. Yeah. And here we have an example Grafana dashboard. So now you might be asking, what are the metrics? What yeah. layers of metrics or what kinds of metrics we are showing? Right? So the first things I want to show is a DNS metrics dashboard. This is very interesting because normally uh, any networking issue starts off with DNS problems. So we are trying to provide this dashboard a single point of contact for all these network, uh, networking uh, uh, quality of service and to see what's happening here. My cluster today seems to be behaving well. <laughs> it has like 0% request to responses. It's uh, a lucky day. Lucky day. 0% <laughs> uh, drop, so which is good. But normally what happens is in a, a, a real world cluster, the requests sometimes would not be coming back with responses. So for that, we will have this dotted line like jump up. And what more do we have here is we have metrics in terms of looking at, OK, what are the errors we are receiving for DNS? Where in what nodes you are receiving those errors, right? And we can also see for compliance reasons uh, 
who is making how many requests to who. So obviously I have a demo pod which is like constantly pinging bing.com mm -hmm. and it is trying to see how many requests it can get responses for. It seems to be like Bing is responding really well today, right? And and on top of it, for security reasons, if there is somebody who is like spoofing your DNS server and replying wrong IP addresses, you can quickly see that here. That's that. This sounds good. So you mentioned DNS. It's a L7. Do you have any other metrics at a, a TCP L4 layer as well? Like I care about sometimes where why my connections are getting uh, blocked or why if if usually it happens is my application is dropping packets and I have no idea what's going on and I go bonkers uh, of <laughs> what's going on. So do you have any any those such metrics? It's a very common scenario, right? Yeah. Uh, networking engineers trying to battle out why my application is not working because of a single log line. So yes, so uh, L7, we got it covered with DNS, we will have HTTP, but L4 and L3 is where the real meat yep. is. And there we can quickly go to a workload based pod flows dashboard, which we have. What so, is workload based pod dashboard? That's a good question. Workload in cloud native world is whenever you apply a certain deployment or a certain replica set, it runs the same replicas of the pods in multiples of it, right? So we consider a bunch of that to be one workload. And so the, each workload has like uh, multiple pods inside it. So we try mm -hmm. to show the metrics at various granular levels at namespace, mm -hmm. at node, mm -hmm. at workload level, and at pod level. So it's like, it depends on the sliding scale of what is your requirement as an engineer. And so for that matter, I have this test um, pod called Goldfinger pod. It is a Bloomberg-based open source solution. We, we use other open source a lot too. <laughs> uh, so this pings each other and also pings the world. So here you can see that what is happening in this cluster. Or we can go to a different pod, which has a little bit more data. It is an internal tool. But uh, you could see for this particular workload called K Pinger bad, we have uh, the heat map of what is going on incoming and outgoing for all the pods in that workload. At what point of time, who is talking the most, and at what point of time are there any errors or any drops? So this is very interesting. Drops, what we have done is anything which happens inside the VM will get to know. So Retina attaches these eBPF programs to various kernel level and various kernel hook points and gets an event whenever something goes bad, like when a packet gets inserted into contract. Mm -hmm. Something bad happens, we'll get an event with a reason. So we can show what is happening in the cluster with a reason and when it happened and to who it has happened. And that is like game changer to make it very easy to understand what's happening within the VM. That does sound like a very game changer. This this sounds like a lot of data. Thank you, Vamsi, for sharing. I, I uh, So how do you handle, does Retina work well in scale? Like how do you handle scale if, if there is so much of a data coming in uh, from from my clusters? That's a good question. So we employ various different mechanisms. We have annotation space, wherein if you annotate a certain pod, only then the metrics will show. Oh, interesting. So that is a different uh, mode you can run in. Or we have this uh, custom resource definition, which can say to which pods you want metrics to be generated. Because not all pods are interesting always, right? Yeah. So you could on demand say who you want it to be applied to. So you also mentioned about about uh, the pod work TCP uh, connections. Are there any you do you also have metrics for the interface? Uh, what is usually it happens? My application is running full, and I have some RxDx uh, buffer over, overflow. Do you do you have those metrics as well? Absolutely. Let me tackle the TCP one first. So TCP metrics, we have those visibility into what's going on in TCP uh, connections too. So one major indication of something is bad with a connection of TCP is resets or fins or Correct. any of these yes. flags. So we get those data too. And we are solely focusing on uh, uh, resets because it's easy to understand and correlate what's happening. So workload level or even namespace level, you can get the data. For your second question about RxTx buffers, we should explain what that is. Mm -hmm. In accelerated networking environments, which is very specific to Azure, or in SRIOE environments where a full NIC is attached to the VM, sometimes what happens is the NIC or the VM is unable to process the number of events which are coming into the NIC, and then there is a receive buffer 
yeah. which gets filled over and then it gets overflowed. So we get metrics for that too. So if we quickly go to our cluster-based dashboards where we show the node level metrics, you could see a lot more uh, in terms of like how is your cluster performing at a node level, like in general, like a quick overview. At the very bottom uh, of all of these uh, awesome metrics, we have interface node stats. So how is the node performing how is the interfaces of the node performing? And here it seems like, again, this cluster is behaving really well today. We have no data, which is amazing. That's like dream of any engineer today. Uh, but you would see something happening in here if there are like drops with respect to buffer overflows, et cetera. Awesome. Thank you so much, Vamsi, for sharing it. And um, this, is, this is really a great uh, insight to the to especially to non-network engineers to understand what exactly is going on, how to, how to debug it first triage the issues. And um, everything of this has been open sourced in Retina. You can find that in the retina.sh. And we welcome contributors and would love to have more uh, community support to support Retina. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.